So we are now recording. Okay, so um, let me just start by saying uh, welcome. I think this is uh, um, obviously um, a meeting that I think uh, I was really looking forward to, and I hope uh, everybody was, was looking forward to it. I know there have been a lot of questions that people have had about um, how we're going to be uh, starting the school year. So, um, uh, you know, finally an opportunity um, now that we have some, some good information, we're really working on the plans to um, provide everybody with that information and to update you. Um, just uh, for what it's worth, um, the meeting is being recorded. Um, it will be posted afterwards. I'm not exactly sure where, but I will send out a link once I know where it's posted. So anybody who can't be here uh, will be able to watch the meeting and, and uh, receive the information that way. In addition, um, everyone's been muted. Um, and, and the purpose of that, again, is not to uh, mute voices per se, but just to allow everyone the um, ability to hear uh, what I'm saying or whoever is speaking is saying um, questions can be asked in the chat and there will be a period of time um, at the end of the um, presentation um, for people to ask questions and to have those questions answered. Before we get started, there's a couple key things that I want to talk to you about. One of them is, um, this is hot off the press, the daily bell schedule for high school was supposed to be 8.30 to 3.15. Um, it will be changed to 8.30 until 3 o'clock. So there's going to be, um, eat, the school day will be 15 minutes shorter every day. Uh, and the purpose of this is to, um, that, that amount of time, so 75 minutes, 15 minutes a day over the course of a week, will be added to the, the school day on Monday, um, during which we already have faculty meetings, and, and that will allow us to have some really extensive professional development on Mondays for teachers around remote learning strategies and approaches, uh, platforms, things of that nature. Because uh, one of the things that we know is that teachers really did an amazing job from March 16th until the end of the school year. Um, and they did that sort of just from grit and will. Um, but we want to pr provide them with some, some really kind of strong uh, learning and, and philosophical and, and uh, pedagogical underpinnings um, so that they can do this work even better um, throughout this school year. This is not going to be a popular announcement, but annual physical exam forms are due. Um, and for, for anybody who has not completed uh, or and submitted a physical exam by the start of school, they will not be allowed to participate in remote, hybrid, or in-person learning. So if you have the forms and you have not submitted them, please submit them ASAP. Um, I'm sure there will be some questions about this, uh, you know, where the forms uh, can be found. Um, it's a state of Connecticut form, so you can find it on, on uh, you know, if you Google it, you'll be able to find it. But it's really important that you get those physical exams done before the start of the school year. And again, um, I think a question is probably going to come up about why would it matter for remote learning? Um, it is still a requirement to be uh, a student in normal public schools to have a, a completed physical and it's best practice to have that done. Um, and the, the state guidelines, I don't exactly know off the top of my head which students need it, but it, I, I don't believe that every single student needs it. Um, but uh, again, there's some, some guidance that I can send out to everybody after the meeting. I believe uh, Brenda Wilcox Williams may have sent something out earlier in the day that, that provides some information about that. The last one is a shameless plug. Our, the Brian McMahon High School School Governance Council uh, is looking for five parent members. Um, we are looking for parent members who are interested in uh, um, getting involved in the school, being at the table where the decisions are being made, having access to some really great information, and really feeling like you're part of, of the good stuff going on at Brian McMahon High School. So um, I would ask that anybody who is interested be on the lookout. I will be sending out a, a, a meeting invite for next week for a panel discussion um, from current parents on the School Governance Council to kind of talk about the role that they play. And I encourage anybody who's interested to put their hat in the ring or put their name in the hat, whichever you're supposed to do. Um, and get involved. So those are the key items. The goals of this meeting, this, uh, we're looking to do accomplish a few things in this meeting. The first one is um, to help you understand how this school year will be different than typical years. And we already know that it's going to be different in many ways, and, and hopefully I can provide you some clarity so it's not like uh, you're just wondering and, and you know, kind of, uh, um, I don't know, I think sometimes when you don't have information, uh, we just, our minds wander to places, and, and I want to provide you with that information as best I can today. 
Um, I also wanted to help you understand the important steps that we have taken, not only as a school, but as the district as a whole. Um, some really great leadership and collaboration has taken place and to help everyone understand what that has been. I think it's really important to talk about the shared responsibility for the health and safety and all of all. It's not just uh, what the schools are doing, but it's also what we ask of, uh, of parents and the community as a whole um, to help ensure the safety and health of all students. And then lastly, um, I hope to help you understand where you can go to get information and answers to questions. The format of the meeting, uh, it'll start with a presentation. I'll go through a number of slides and then um, we'll spend about the last uh, half hour, 20 minutes or so of the meeting um, with, uh, for, with an opportunity for you guys to, to ask some questions. Um, you can ask questions in the chat throughout the meeting. Um, Mr. Abdus Salam, who is our moderator, will uh, you know, break in at, at key points to, and he will distill. So if, there's, if five people are asking the same question, he'll kind of find a way to distill that into um, its own question and uh, he will break in and, um, and help to uh, um, you know, provide clarity in the moment. So the first thing I want to go through is, is this is a day in the life of, and what this is to, intended to illustrate is, you know, to help people kind of visualize and understand what a student may experience uh, in the course of a school day. So we're going to look at Malik. He's a ninth grade student, and he is a, a general education student, as opposed to a student with uh, an IEP or special needs. So if you follow along here, um, this is the route that Malik takes. Uh, Malik um, takes the bus to school. He arrives to school sometime around 8.20. Um, at 8.20, he will go through a screening process. And, and something to understand, the building will not be open to students before 8 o'clock this year. So if a student arrives before 8 o'clock, and, and I think sometimes parents um, you know, will drop students off because they're on their way to work, the building will not be open um, before 8 o'clock. And that's simply because we, you know, we uh, you know, to have people in place to manage um, the processes and to, to provide supervision. So um, back to Malik, he arrives at school at about 8.20 and goes through the screening process. We will have multiple entrances to the building. Um, each one will be staffed by um, screeners who will be, um, you know, uh, um, reviewing a, a screener that uh, Malik has taken to ensure that he can pass through and into the building. Malik will enter the building and possibly go have, have breakfast or will um, be allowed to uh, sit in, in certain designated spots in the building. Um, what cannot happen, um, which has been the past practice, and one of the many ways that the school year will be different is that you know, um, students will not just be able to congregate in random spots. Um, moving on to number three, and, and this is an abbreviated version. Obviously, there's, there's gonna be more to it, um, but, but to kind of wrap your head around what the day might look like. Number three, Malik will attend blocks one and two, and uh, these classes uh, will take place from around 8.30 till about 11.10. Um, this will be adjusted somewhat um, as we um, incorporate the, the new information around the 15-minute uh, the, um, early um, dismissal at the end of the day. And there will be mask, break, mask breaks worked into classes um, as those are um, things that students will need um, in order to maintain the mask wearing throughout the day. Um, Number four, at the third block, because third block is when we do lunches, um, there will be some, it, it's, a, it's a longer block. So during third block, Malik will attend advisory at some point. Um, and this is not like a separate class. We're going to build social and emotional learning or advisory work uh, into the third block class. Also during third block, Malik will have lunch at some point. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute, what lunch will look like. It'll be very different. Um, because we have to maintain some, uh, some, some, uh, um, some limitations on congregation of students and, and lunches and things like that. So at some point during third block, in addition to doing the work of his third block class, Malik will attend advisory but also get lunch. Um, from 1.50 till about 3 o'clock, Malik will attend his, uh, his fourth block class. And then um, at 3 o'clock, Malik will be dismissed from school. Malik will board a bus home at three o'clock or Malik will stay after school to attend some after school activities. One thing to know for sure, um, students will not be allowed to stay in the building after school unless they have an activity that they are engaged in. So if it's athletics, if it's a club, 
um, if it's makeup work with a teacher, um, something of that nature. So those are, those are the reasons that a student would be allowed to uh, remain in the building after three o'clock. But um, again, because you know, we're, we're, um, we're very concerned about health and safety and um, students congregating, um, students will be expected to leave the building at three. Okay, let me jump in here, uh, Mr. Hurwitz. So, so a few questions. The next slide, um, we have, um, this is a, for distance learning. So if Malik is in distance learning. I'm not sure why some uh, lines have appeared on, on my, my uh, PowerPoint for some reason. Um, my mic's not working. So Malik, if he's, if he's in distance learning for a given day, he'll get up in the morning, he will eat breakfast. At 8.30, when the students who are in school will be entering the classroom, for first block, Malik will be logging onto his um, computer um, for first block and will, uh, um, again, anybody who has questions, just please put them into the chat. Uh, Malik will be logging on at 8.30 and then um, attending first oh, block with me. his peers who are in the building. Uh, the whole here, while um, students who are in remote mode um, and who are oh, in person okay. on a given day will all be <laughs> synchronous. They'll all be working together, learning together, um, in, the, in the same um, virtual environment or in-person environment, but it's not going to be um, where students who are at home are kind of going to be doing something um, quietly by themselves. They'll be engaged with the class. Um, so again, from 8.30 to 11.10, Malik will attend blocks one and two classes. Um, then at about 11.10, when we go from second block to third block, third block is that extended block once again. Malik will be doing three things during third block, and it's the same three things that his classmates at school will be doing. He will be attending uh, the SEL advisory um, uh, session that will take place during his third block, so he'll be a part of that. Great. He will also be eating lunch when the rest of his classmates are eating lunch, and then he will, of course, be doing whatever uh, academic work is going on during third block. This is great. During, uh, so then at about 150, Malik would go from third block to fourth block. And in fourth block, Malik would attend his class. Uh, the school day for Malik would end at three o'clock. And at this point, if Malik is involved in sports or involved in some sort of after school activity, he would be coming back to the building to attend um, that meeting of some sort or to, to participate in athletics. Uh, Kadir, Mr. Abdusalan, any, any uh, questions that I can get to right now that we're not going to get to later? Or? Yes, you need to turn your volume up. I can't hear you. Are you muted? No. Can you hear me? You need to turn your volume up, Scott. Check your phone. Check your phone. What's going on? This is great. All right. I'm gonna make yeah, sure you else can hear me. Can you hear Mr. Q? He's talking. This is what I've uh, unmuted you and made you a co-host as well. If you could assist with the moderating of the chat and help me, uh, there are questions. He's asking questions. Do you hear him? Clearly, I'm doing something wrong because I still have you muted, Barb. <laughs> Technology attack. Here we go. Miss Water, can you can you hear me? I hear you. Yes. I can't hear you. I'm not sure what's going on. Everyone can else you, can hear you me though. Yourself? I'm trying to call Scott. Works. All right, we may have to go to an alternative uh, arrangement in terms of uh, uh, questions being asked in the chat. So I may have to um, pull somebody in. Okay. So um, at this point, let me let's talk about some of the uh, the, the things that we're doing um, to make sure that we have a, a safe learning environment for for all students. Um, and these are, you know, some 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 uh, some a some actions we've taken, some um, sort of decisions that have been made about, um, you know, the, uh, um, processes and procedures that will be taking place at Brian Grant High School. 
So one thing to consider, and, and this is, uh, you know, one of the key pieces of this is, is reducing the density of students in the building. And, um, you know, so if we look at it, at least 50% reduced density in the building and in classrooms, uh, students will be divided into different groups. We'll have an A group, we'll have a B group, and then we also have the students who are 100% remote. And as a result of these designating different groups and having um, different groups of students in the building um, on given days, we're looking at on any given day about 35 to 40% of our total enrollment that will be in the building each day. Um, students will be expected to wear masks at all times. Um, and this is, you know, we know that, that there might be some requests for a mask exemption. Uh, we know that students will not be wearing their masks while they're eating lunch per se. We will have mask breaks, but the, but the real expectation is that students are going to be wearing masks at all times in the building and wearing them appropriately, not kind of pulled down to their chin, um, not with their nose exposed, but with, with everything uh, open um, and with everything covered. Mr. Abdusalam, do you want to try to unmute yourself? See if you can do that. Yeah, can you hear me? Very, I still cannot hear you. Turn your volume. Ms. Wood? Uh, you can't hear me either. I think you have to turn your volume up. Turn my volume up. Can you hear me now? I got you. you got can me. you hear me now? <laughs> I got you. All right, give me a second. What about, you just muted me again. You're unmuted, Barb should be unmuted. You can hear me. Yeah, I turned my volume off. That was the foolish thing that I did. So I actually had to turn my volume on my computer. I am so sorry. Okay, should I pause for a second? Do we have some questions that we need yeah, to answer? Yeah, let's get to some questions. Um, some of you may answer uh, but later on, but we got them now. So what about our special ed students? Um, so that's something like that. That is, I know there was a, a four o'clock meeting um, to discuss um, the arrangements for students with special needs, but just in general, um, the, the district has kind of looked at it as as um, basically three ba uh, groups of, of special needs students: some with um, kind of severe or high needs, some with moderate needs, and some with mild needs. Um, and and really depending on the student and the level of need, some students will be here five days a week. Um, and some students will be here, um, you know, on that two-day rotation with their with their peers um, who don't have uh, IEPs. Okay, there's lots of questions around physical forms, uh, et cetera. Um, one question was, if the if you can't get a, an appointment until after the school year starts, we have one parent asking about October. Um, will the, will there will her child be able to attend school? Um, what I'm being told is no, that, that exceptions will not be made. I, if, if possible, I would look, like, can we keep this, um, this program to uh, just, just, yeah, ju just to kind of the reopening plan. And if there's, um, you know, questions about physicals, we can kind of deal with those via email. I understand that that's going to raise a lot of questions. Okay. Uh, question about um, remote learning and sports. So if your child is doing remote, remote learning, can he or she still play sports? Yes. And how do we go about it? Definitely. Um, the, the, one, the one caveat there is there will not be a bus to campus. So students who are doing remote learning will have to find their way back to campus for practices or games or, or whatever that is. Okay. So number Save of students in the bus. classroom, number of students in the classroom in the screening process? Uh, maximum number of students in the classroom, I believe, is 14. 14. And um, screening process will be, a, uh, it will be a, a, a series of questions that students will have to answer. Um, in order to be allowed into the building each day, uh, we're working on the details of what that process is going to look like, whether it's going to be paper or electronic. Okay. And do you want to just talk about the sports piece? I know you don't have a lot of answers, but a couple of questions around. I have, I have a slide for that later, so so I, okay. I'll, I'll get to that in, in the uh, um, towards the end of this. Okay. All right. So let me uh, let me move along here. I believe everybody else is muted, yeah? Okay, so 
uh, masks at all times. And again, this is going to be really important. Like I, I'm, I'm going to be creating a video that I'm going to send to students and, and talk to them not only about masks, but social distancing. Um, this is going to be really difficult for students, but, but these are going to be some, some pretty firm expectations in terms of, you know, how they, how they act in this building. And I know that in a lot of ways, students have not been um, distancing or wearing masks uh, outside of school probably since May. Um, but uh, um, they're going to be expected to do those things. And again, the purpose is to, to ensure everyone's health and safety in the building. Um, lunches, we're going to be doing, uh, you know, we're not going to do the old school kind of cafeteria servery. Everything's going to be prepackaged, sealed, sealed meals, um, maximum of 25 students dining in any one area. Uh, whenever and wherever possible, we're going to have students dining outdoors. So on the patio in the back of the building, um, uh, in, in a courtyard, uh, in a patio, anywhere that we can do it because we just know um, students without their masks on being outside, it's a much better um, better setup. Again, back to it, no congregating groups of, of more than 25 students in a space. Um, hand sanitizing stations will be installed in every classroom. Um, students will be encouraged to use them as frequently as possible when entering, when exiting a classroom, uh, at any point in transition. Uh, HEPA filters in classrooms uh, will be, um, the district has arranged through, I believe, United Rental to provide for HEPA filters in every classroom in the building. Um, to assist with um, uh, some increased uh, filters in the, in the HVAC system. Um, cleaning protocols have been upgraded. Uh, you know, things like in between lunch shifts, uh, every surface uh, where students have sat to eat will be cleaned thoroughly and sanitized. Uh, lavatories at least twice per day, um, things of that nature. So there's, again, steps that we've taken uh, already to, to ensure the health and safety. And you know, while this is a, a PowerPoint presentation, I can't possibly get to everything. We'll be producing a manual that we will share uh, with the community so it'll have much more detail. So an important thing is, is um, you know, mitigating um, the potential for any kind of transmission. And one of the ways that we're doing this is through a daily health screening process. Every student and staff member who's entering the building will have to complete a screener. Um, if a student does not complete the screener, they will be um, required to do so before entering the building. If a student uh, responds in a way to a screener question that says that they have, you know, for example, if a student has been to a, a state that's on the, on the quarantine list and they indicate on the screener that they've been to one of those states, um, you know, a decision will be made with regards to um, how to, how, you know, that student will be pulled aside and a decision will have to be made um, regarding um, what will happen next. And it's likely that that student would not be allowed into the building and would have to quarantine um, for the required number of days. Um, Question about way, staff. What's um, that? Sorry, sorry. Question about staff. Are, are staff required to, to be tested? Or? Not required to be tested, but they, do, they are required to complete the screener. Okay. And we're not assigning lockers, no? No lockers, that's a great question. Students will not be assigned lockers this year. In fact, in the manual that comes out, the first item up for bid on that manual is the lockers. Students will not be assigned lockers. And that's, um, you know, really because lockers, uh, um, you know, just from a, a, um, a spacing standpoint, but also from a, uh, um, a health and safety standpoint, you know, we can't, we don't feel that, that we can do it the, uh, in a way that would keep everyone uh, at the highest level of health and safety. So um, no lockers for students. Students are gonna have to bring, you know, the materials to school for that day. Um, so regular deep cleaning and sanitizing of high touch point services throughout the day and restrooms. Um, also, uh, you know, um, thorough cleaning every evening. Uh, signs asking students to, to wash hands, sanit um, hand sanitizer, uh, really widespread throughout the building and filled, always, always filled. So available for students to use. So that was, that would be mitigating, um, you know, things that were steps that were taken to mitigate um, uh, the, the potential transmission. Um, hey, Laura, uh, oh, one more question about, uh, well, I know this is an ongoing question, uh, question here about COVID, but um, one question is, why aren't we taking temperature checks? And what is the protocol if someone does test positive during a school session for students and staff members? So that's, that's, you know, we're at that slide right now. I've, I've, um, okay. 
I'm going to try to share this in the. Uh, I thought I could. I thought I could just right click and share this into the uh, the chat, but uh, I may have to. Give me a second. Let me just get out of here for a second. I will go to this, and I will share this in the chat if I can copy it. Um, so this is a um, a link to something called the Dendum Five, which is from the state of Connecticut. Uh, where is my chat? Uh, I'll share it out later. This is a link to what's something called Addendum 5, which is the state of Connecticut's protocols for, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, deals a lot with um, what's required in schools and, you know, in terms of uh, uh, responding to potential cases. Um, but the state, the, you know, and, and I think uh, CDC does not recommend the, the testing because um, just it doesn't really, uh, it would have to have to happen, you know, nearly every day in order for it to provide anything um, uh, um, act, uh, actionable, but if some if if there is a potential case, if someone is if a student is exhibiting symptoms, uh, one of the things that will the first thing that will happen is um, that student will be placed into an isolation room. This is a separate room somewhere in the building. Um, you know, it, it will it it, um, it will have its own uh, restroom and um, uh, you know a hand washing station, but also uh, the nurse will have supplies in there, and the nurse will then. Um, come in to begin working with that student. If uh, and and um, the student will, um, depending on what the nurse finds out, potentially send the student home. Um, if it's a if it's a suspected case, then obviously the student would be sent home, would be kept in the isolation room until um, a time that that student can be uh, can be um, picked up and taken home. The next thing that would happen is is contact tracing. So um, if if there's a confirmed case of COVID. Um, or a suspected case, we would um, do our best to identify anyone who that student came into contact with. If it was a confirmed case, um, the messaging would be uh, your uh, your student was in contact with a confirmed a student with a confirmed case of COVID or an individual with a confirmed case of COVID. Um, if it's suspected, we would you know um, the messaging would be a little bit different um, if we didn't know for sure. Uh, but we would inform people in the community so that they could take uh, the required steps. Um, and then depending on what the, the situation is, you know, if a student uh, was a confirmed case of COVID, they would have to quarantine for a period of time. If a student came into contact with a student who had a confirmed case of COVID, uh, there's a different length of time that they would have to quarantine for. So isolation room, contact tracing, quarantining, and, and again, all of this, it's not things that are being invented in Norwalk. Um, these are things that are coming directly from uh, the state of Connecticut. Uh, all decisions that have been made about returning to school have been done in conjunction with the, uh, the health, um, the D director of the health department um, for, for the city of Norwalk. So it's not, you know, nothing's being done in a vacuum. It's not things that we're dreaming up. It's all done um, in consultation and collaboration with, with the experts in these areas. So um, that's how we would deal with a uh, responding to a potential case of COVID. Okay, a couple of questions about um, oh, transportation. You're I, I see that there. Go, go ahead. It was question about um, how will school buses work? Um, why aren't we requiring requiring students to be tested for COVID? Um, and can we wear gloves? Or will this, can they wear gloves? So, again, I think a lot of the decisions that are being made and the, the processes that are being put in place are based on the guidance, the guidelines, the the the. Um, uh, the knowledge of experts in those areas. So, for example, um, you know, why aren't we doing testing? Because I think there, it's 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 not recommended um, by, I believe, the CDC, but also the Connecticut State Department uh, um, um, Health Department. Um, so these are things that are not required and they're not recommended because I, they don't necessarily make uh, anything any safer unless they can be done to such an extent, which they they you know. I, I, um, but I think, I, you know, it's, it's not something that we're just choosing not to do. It's, um, it's with the, uh, in, in consultation with experts in these areas. Um, students are welcome to wear gloves. I think, uh, you know, what I've seen is that gloves are, are no longer required and certainly not recommended. Um, they, the, the, one, the one piece of PPE, personal protective equipment, that is um, recommended and required are masks because uh, research has shown that masks 
do a tremendous amount to, um, to, to really reduce and almost eliminate the spread of, of COVID and other uh, respiratory illnesses. So um, that's why we would, we would not require students to wear gloves, but they're welcome to do it, I guess, if it's, if it's something that's gonna make um, a student feel more comfortable. Transportation, um, based on the current level of uh, infection, the infection rate in Connecticut, buses are allowed to, to be at 80% capacity. Um, students who take a bus to school will come to school. The bus will drop them off um, at the end of the, um, the, 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 the bus run at the front of the building, kind of near the, uh, the auditorium area. And um, students will enter the building from multiple access point, multiple entry points, uh, where there will be screeners um, who will run them through the screening process. So these are things that, that have changed with regards to entry to the building, right? It used to be kind of come in, um, flooded through that single point of entry. We will not have a single point of entry. We'll have multiple points of entry because if we're trying to get uh, 700 students or so through one door, uh, it's going to take way too long. So we have multiple entry points. All of them will be staffed and monitored. So we're not just going to have kind of doors, you know, open in the building for anybody to walk in. Um, Arrival will be staggered in the sense that, you know, buses don't all drop off at the same time, but if two buses arrive at the same time, the students who are on the second bus um, will be held on that bus until a point in time where, where they can enter the building. So we're not kind of putting large groups of students into one area. Um, students who are driving to the building themselves, who are being driven by somebody else, who are walking to the building, will access the building, will have different entry points into the building. Um, so that's, again, multiple entry points to um, create as, as much flow as we can while ensuring that every student has, um, you know, partakes of the screening process. Transitions. Um, we're not going to ring a bell and have all students kind of move about the halls freely. We're going to stagger transition between classes. So, for example, if first block is over and we're going to start second block, we will start dismissing students a little bit before um, the start of second block. Um, so that we can ensure that we don't have 700 students in the building in the halls at the same time. We're going to do our best to uh, reduce the flow of students in the classroom. Um, I mean, in the hallway at any time. We've also identified hallways as unidirectional. So students are going to sometimes have to take the long way around um, to get to places. And this helps to uh, reduce the face-to-face -face, um, crossing of paths uh, that we know is, is not healthy. Everyone's seen that, that photograph from that school in Georgia. Um, we are putting processes in place because we don't want to be that school. Um, not only because it looks bad, but because it's just not safe. Um, so we're putting things in place that will, um, you know, kind of reduce the density of students, but also increase the organization of flow in the hallways. Uh, you know, passing time used to be five minutes. Passing time is going to be um, 10, 10 to 12 minutes, um, 10 to 15 minutes probably at the start of the year until we get the hang of it. And then possibly 10 to 12 minutes as we um, become more adept at it. But this is to create better organization and to reduce that con the condensed sort of like, uh, um, you know, density of students that will sometimes happen um, during a regular school day. We'll be building mass breaks in, um, and, and again, we're still working on some of these, the details of some of these things. Um, signage, uh, in terms of signage, we'll be, we'll be placing arrows on the floors to tell students that the hallway is unidirectional. We'll be putting signage up that, that reminds students to uh, you know, to wash their hands and to use hand and sanitizer. Um, we will be putting marks at different points in the building. So if students have to uh, line up, you know, to wait for a, a class that they're going to, for the door to open to that class, they'll line up at a, a designated mark area that is six feet from the next mark. So, you know, visual cues to help students, you know, remember, um, you know, the things that we need them to do uh, from, a, from a, you know, a social distancing standpoint, from a density standpoint, to ensure everyone's health and safety. Um, and again, you know, another piece is that uh, dismissal will not be ring the bell and everyone just kind of departs classrooms into the hallway. We'll be dismissing in a staggered way. One of the things that we're talking about, haven't landed on this for sure, but let's say bus 312 arrives, it is, you know, 250. Uh, we will consider dismissing students um, from bus 312 at that time, and those would be the only students in the hallway at that time. Um, the last students possibly dismissed would be the ones who are going to be participating in after-school activities. Um, but again, still working on the details of it, but uh, some things that we're going to do to stagger um, dismissal to ensure the health and safety of everyone. 
A big question that has come up, and Ms. Wood alluded to it before, is athletics. Uh, what I have here is just a, um, an update on what's going on with athletics. Uh, the, the CIAC, the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference, has paused all fall athletic activities through August 24th. So nothing is taking place with athletics um, for high school until at least August 24th. The CIAC during that time will meet with state health officials to better understand the State Department of Health, uh, Public Health's recommendations, and a determination will be coming sometime soon. Um, not sure what that's going to look like. Uh, it may involve the cancellation of some sports. It may involve the cancellation of all sports. It may involve a reduction in scheduling. Um, Mr. Cross, who's our athletic director, I think has not been sleeping much as he's tried to uh, navigate all of this and, and make sense of it and do everything that he can to ensure um, that students have the um, ability to participate and to do so safely. So I know there's a lot of questions about that, but um, we are, you know, we're, we're following what the CIAC is saying and the State Department of Health. A uh, couple of questions, uh, sure. Mr. Hurwitz. Yes. Um, will the, our Medical Health Care Academy students be able to uh, attend classes at NCC or sessions at NCC? Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure on that. I was talking to Mr. Such this morning um, because, one, you know, one of the other things we have to, to figure out is that there's a, um, a, uh, a C, uh, an EMT course that students are able to take for a certification. Um, there, you know, we had, uh, um, you know, we may have to do that remotely. So I, I think there's, there's a chance that some of that may go remote. Um, I, uh, I don't want to misspeak here and say the wrong thing, but we will know for sure and, and let everyone who's involved in that know. Yeah, marching band and choir. Um, uh, still working that out. The state is providing some guidance regarding uh, marching band participation. You know, choir, one of, the, one of the real concerns is the number of students in the classroom singing and the potential for, you know, uh, spread of respiratory droplets. Um, so, uh, you know, what I can say is that it's not going to look like it did last year. Um, we just have not uh, had, a, had a chance yet to determine what it will look like. But, you know, I think with anything, we want students to be able to access their education in a meaningful way, but we also want to keep everyone um, healthy and safe. So uh, it will balance those two, th two things, whatever, uh, whatever um, we land upon for choir. A question about siblings from different schools. Um, any inter-school inter coordination um, Will siblings from different schools be placed in the same cohorts to attend school on the same day? Um, I, you know, we have not talked about that specifically. Um, I would say that, you know, we we we're, we're, we understand that we may have to make um, some you know some arrangements in terms of who's in which cohorts. Uh, you know, if, if we, for example, if we're dividing up our, our cohorts or different groups by student last name, and we have two siblings who happen to have different last names that would put them in different cohorts, we would, you know, make an arrangement so those students would both be in the same cohort. So I, 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 I think we probably can do that as well. Um, we would explore it with students in different schools. And, you know, I don't want to make a guarantee here, but I think, um, you know, we, we would definitely uh, work towards that if, if that's something that a family needed. So um, I think one of the big questions that you know, we now know the answer to, um, there was a period of time, I think I sent an email out that said that we have potentially fourth and fifth graders coming to Brian McMahon High School based on the density in the, in the elementary schools. There are no fourth and fifth graders coming to Brian McMahon High School. So our building is ours to use for high school students. And um, so the model that we are going to be using is, is a hybrid model um, for students who have chosen uh, in person, and that model will consist of two groups of students, um, and the decision will be: it, it, are the, uh, the 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The determination was made that we will have um, an A group of students and a B group of students, and we know that that may lead to a little bit of confusion as we navigate the fact that we have A days and B days. But we will um, we will provide as much clarity as we can to ensure that everyone knows which days they should be coming to school. Um, so what this, what this slide really talks about is the fact that the teaching and learning will be synchronous. 
So regardless of whether a student is in school or out of school on a given day, they will both be doing the exact same thing. They will be checked in to the classroom. Um, teachers will be using video. Uh, in a perfect world, the video and the audio coming from the classroom, uh, the student who is at home will be watching and listening to exactly what's going on and partaking and learning in the exact same way. We know that it's not going to work that way every single day, but we, we are, that's why we're working with teachers on strategies for um, effective remote learning, effective synchronous remote and in-person learning. Um, I think that teachers are going to, um, you know, uh, develop knowledge and, and strategies uh, that they won't have on day one, that they will have on day three and be better at on day six and be better at, at week four. Um, but the idea is that students will be, whoever's at home will be doing the exact same thing as students who are in the classroom. And, and we just know that it's gonna take time to figure out how to do this really well. Um, you know, we are looking at uh, obviously virtual learning and, and that's not just uh, a teacher sitting in front of the camera and talking to the class like I'm doing right now. I think most high school students would check out after a period of time. A portion of the learning may be the teacher talking to the class, talking to the students who are at home, but then a portion of it is gonna be using things like Nearpod or Flipgrid or breakout rooms so that students can do kind of um, collaborative work and discussion and you know, develop a presentation of some sort uh, using something like PowerPoint that they would then share uh, with the whole class. So it's like, what does that virtual learning look like? What does that um, combined in school and out of school look like? Um, obviously smaller class sizes that we had talked about, so it's not smaller class sizes. Classes will still be a maximum of 28, but with a portion of students being out of school on any given day, um, there will be up to 14 students in a classroom um, at a time. Um, and that is gonna be like the kind of standard. There may be times where there might be more students in a class in school at a given time, but um, that might be something if we have you know, 28 students spread out on the football field doing phys ed at the same time. It wouldn't be 28 students in, a, in a, an enclosed space. Um, so the schedule, we have an A day and a B day, which has always been the high school thing um, since we've gone to, to, um, since we've gone to the block. And then we have an A group and a B group. Um, what I have in front of you, what you see in front of you right now is just the, for the month of uh, for the month of September. This is the, the groups of students. So we're going to start with the A group being in school for two days, and then they will be out of school for two days while the B group is in school for two days. And it'll keep rotating like that. So if I'm an A student, I'll be in school today doing my A day schedule, and then I'll be in school tomorrow doing my B day schedule. And then for the next two days, I'll be home. For the next two days, the B, the B group of students will be in school doing their B, A day schedule and then their B day schedule. So I suspect that, that you know, it, this is going to require some additional clarification. What, what I need you to know more than anything right now is that students will be split into two groups and the first group of students will be in school for two days in a row and then out of school for two days in a row. And that will continue to be the rotation. Other school districts have gone with a model where they have um, like one day where all students are in remote learning. We are not doing that in Norwalk. So I'll be in for two days, out for two days. In for two days, out for two days. In for two days, out for two days. Um, and then, you know, a weekend, obviously, if, if, it's, if it splits that, then if I'm in on a Friday, I might be in again on a Monday, um, but that'll be the rotation. We will provide before the school year starts, a document that will illustrate this clearly. Students will know which group they're in and they will know which days they're supposed to be in the building. Um, because I suspect that me telling you this right now is you have questions and, and that's okay. Uh, we'll do our best to answer them and um, you know we'll make the adjustment. Yeah, I have a couple of questions right now. That's a good segue. Um, how will physical education impact those uh, doing online learning? I just answered that in the chat. Oh, okay. They will um, have PE class for remote learning as well. They may divide it a little different because the in-person PE classes will go outside to the degree possible. 
and we will have one teacher deliver the lesson virtually for those who are on virtual full time and those who are on virtual that day. So they'll be both receiving PE, um, but the PE classes in in person will, to the degree possible, and let's hope for really good weather, be all outdoors. And you know, th there's a practical reason for this. Obviously, like a, a gym teacher can't be carrying around a laptop, and then there's no network that reaches out to the field. So um, we would have to. Th the experience might be a little different with PE um, than it is for other classes because of that. And just to clarify, we are on a five-day schedule, so yes. it's not a four-day and one day. Okay. Nope, we are not doing that one day out kind of thing that other districts are doing. Okay, so now it's time for Q&A. I just want to start, There's, I, I sent out a link to a Google form when I sent the initial invite. Um, a number of people I've responded to directly, but I just want to, um, there's a couple questions that I want to get to um, that people had asked. Uh, when will school reopen? The first day of school is going to be September 1st, and the A group of students will come to school on September 1st and September 2nd. Um, if we switch from hybrid to distance learning, who do we need to notify? Um, so that is, you know, if, if, so there's two things. If, if a student is in the hybrid mode and wants to switch to remote, um, an email to the assistant principal would be the best place to start. And that transition can happen relatively quickly because for a student to transition from um, being in person to being remote doesn't require a lot of, a lot of movement. Um, if a student is looking, is, is starts the year remote but wants to move to hybrid, um, it would require the district's recommendation is that that only happen in the middle of a quarter or at the end slash beginning of the, the, the end of the quarter slash beginning of the next quarter. If there's a situation where it can't be done for any reason, um, the district will do its best to get the student back in as soon as possible. Um, but it may require up to two weeks as, as um, you know, we look at, uh, um, you know, class sizes and, and bus runs and things of that nature. So um, that's, that would be the answer to that. Um, there was a question about students being able to go to the library. I think there's some, some sense that the Norwalk Public Library may offer the ability for students to go to the library on a remote day. Um, I don't know much more beyond the fact that I heard it on one of the town hall meetings last week. Um, so that's something we'll have to explore further, but that would not be at the Brian Grant High School Library. Um, will siblings have the same remote days and in-person days? Yes, that, that will happen. If, if there's something, if something happens and we didn't realize that, that siblings who had different last names were in the different, in different groups, uh, an email to us to say, hey, can you move these kids into the same group? Yes, would be the answer to that. Um, What is, the plan, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, what is the plan for how students will be grouped? Uh, it looks like it would be alphabetical is, is how we would do it. Um, and then, you know, Ms. Wood is working with, uh, um, Power, with Gene Starkman and Power School to kind of make that happen. And, and we may, or may require some manual switching around just to ensure that we keep within our, our sizes that we need. Um, will teachers be on all Zoom calls for kids that are on virtual days? You know, I know that there's variable practice from March 16th until the end of the school year where some things were not done uh, with video. The expectation is that to the extent possible, everyone will be on video um, uh, you know, um, throughout the uh, uh, learning process. Uh, will masks be mandatory? Yes, they will be. And then you know, there's another question about um, what, what to do about a student who doesn't have a mask exemption but refuses to um, to comply with the health and safety things like masks and unidirectional hallways. Uh, we're in the process of developing a, um, a list of behavioral expectations around that because um, we want to make sure that students understand this is not negotiable. Like this is not like, yeah, wear a mask, nod, wink, you know, not at all. Like every student really needs to be wearing that mask at all times, comply with um, distancing in the building and, and congregation in the building and um, you know, unidirectional hallway is really important that we comply with all of these things because ultimately it's not, it's not just a, a, a wanton and kind of random decision. It's about best practice for keeping everyone healthy and safe. And if we don't do these things and we don't do them well, 
then, then we increase the likelihood of transmission and we increase the likelihood of, of a shutdown and going all remote, which isn't what anybody wants. It's not good for anybody. Um, so, you know, we really need um, the help of, of parents and the community to ensure that these things happen. And also, and I know this is not going to be popular either, but, but to, to the extent possible, keep students in healthy behaviors outside of school so that they, you know, um, decrease the, 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 the likelihood of transmission and, and aren't bringing it into the building. Because all of those things will cause us to uh, potentially shut down and go to an all remote model, which we, which we really don't want to do. It's just it's not best for anybody. So those are the questions that were um, asked in the Google form. Um, uh, Mr. Abdusalam, are there questions that exist out there in the chat that I need to get to? Yes, yes, yes. Um, let's see, where will we begin? Um, there were some questions I just want to uh, confirm about when will classrooms be cleaned if we're not doing the you know whole day Wednesday thing. So I think because of you know the, the knowledge, the procedures, and the products that we now have, um, classrooms will be cleaned every day. Um, will be sanitized every day with with um, you know, powerful products that, that are, you know, kind of a 30 second kill time um, for, for COVID and other viruses. So um, that's what will be happening every day. Bathrooms will be cleaned at least twice a day during the school day, but also additionally after school as well. High touch surfaces will be a high area of focus. Um, so, you know, the, the, the procedures have been upgraded um, to, to, uh, to really kind of do everything we can to combat this. Gym lockers and sports. No lockers. No lockers at all. No lockers. Mr. Cross, as I said, who has not been sleeping well as he navigates all this, is working on um, you know, how we will accommodate athletes who need to store uh, equipment and things like that um, on, you know, for practice and for games. Uh, questions about the, the, the cleaning products themselves. Um, how toxic are they? And um, Will custodians be cleaning between classes? No, uh, the custodians will not be cleaning between classes. We're still working on, um, you know, uh, on what we'll do to clean surfaces in between classes. Um, but uh, the products are, you know, it's, they're green products. Um, we're a green school, so all of the cleaning products are, are are green products, not you know petrochemical kind of things. Um, so while very effective at killing COVID, they're not. Um, uh, you know, toxic in the way some kind of traditional cleaning products are. Harmful if, if treated inappropriately, but, you know, um, custodians are trained to use them uh, in, in the, you know, um, in the appropriate way. You know, one of the things that we're doing is we're, there's time in between each lunch shift. So one of the reasons that third block is so long is because we have to put time in between lunch shifts to clean the areas where students are going to be sitting because, um, you know, they're, they're going to be sitting um, at the, in the same place that the, the students from the previous lunch shift. So custodians need time to go through, use the products that they have, um, and allow them time to work, but also time to dissipate so students can come down and use that space safely. Yeah, can students take a sick day? I mean, I would say this. If a student is not feeling well, and it's their day to be in school, they should not come to school. Right. They can access learning remotely on that day. And, and you know, with, with all the concerns over asymptomatic and the, the variability of symptoms that students show, if a student is not feeling well when they get up in the morning, I, I would, and, and I'll get some clarity on this, but, you know, I, I, and I don't want to say the wrong thing right now, but if a student is not feeling well and chooses not to come in the building, which is the right decision, I would encourage that decision but is accessing learning remotely on that day, um, I, I, I believe that that would count as a day of attendance, but I, I don't wanna say the wrong thing and, and you know, tell you something that's incorrect um, because I, I've never had this discussion with, um, you know, with any of my colleagues in the other schools, but also with uh, Dr. Costanzo or, or Ms. Feoy. So I will, I will look into that and that will be something that we present in our manual that goes out. But again, I cannot say strongly enough, a student not feeling well, don't come to school on that day. Okay. Um, questions about, um, well, the schedule question is, is, you know, keeps coming up is a big one. When will um, students and parents have access to, to schedules and pass or fail? Are we doing pass or fail grades? 
we are not doing pass fail. You know, pass fail we did because we had to go to this remote model so quickly. And we knew very well that we didn't, you know, that there was that that there were um, some serious limitations that a lot of our students have. But you know, every student is getting a brand new laptop to start the school year. Um, the the district has you know gotten funding from the Dalio Foundation to provide a thousand homes of Norwalk Public School students with high speed, reliable network access. Um, you know, there's we're in a much better place now. Um, than we were um, in March, and we will be, we'll, we'll, and we'll get even better. So um, there's no plan to go to a, a, a pass fail model. That was a stopgap at the end of the year. Okay. The new um, computers will be laptops, not Chromebooks. Not Chromebooks. These are Dell laptops. Uh, a schedule. I sent out a schedule um, for people to come in and pick them up this week, starting tomorrow. Seniors, juniors on Wednesday, sophomores on Thursday, freshmen on Friday with a breakdown alpha. The first one I sent out did not contain the letter F. I apologize for that. No offense to people whose last name begin with F. It also contains the letter L twice. So there's two hours where if you have the letter L, you can show up during either of those times. We will not fault you for it. Um, a question keeps coming up. If I have two kids, one's a 10th grader, one's a 12th grader, can we come on the same day? Yes, you can. If I can't get to school on the day that I'm designated to be there, will there be another time? Yes, there will be next week. We'll put something out. And, you know, worst comes to worst, students will get the laptop when they come to school on their first day, um, or we'll find a way to do a, you know, an individual plan to get a kid a laptop. So it's not like, a, oops, sorry, you didn't get to come, you don't get your laptop. We do ask that anybody who still has a school Chromebook and has not paid the $100, that they return the Chromebook with the charger. If you have a Chromebook and you paid the $100, it is yours to keep, and you still get the free laptop. Um, what I would ask is that um, as we about as we as we come close to wrapping this up because it's it's almost eight o'clock and I want to be respectful of everyone's time, um, it, I'm going to send out uh, probably not right now because I'm um, you know this has been a long day but I will send out a form a link to a form and if people have questions that come up they can put the questions into the form and then I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll post um, an FAQ on occasion based off the questions on the form so that. Um, people's questions will be answered. Mr. Abdusalam, any other questions at this point? Um, when we will know the schedules, that was a, a question that wasn't answered. Yeah, before before the the start of the school year. Um, you know, again, we're working on it right now. A lot of these details are being hammered out. We have a lot of the big picture stuff. Um, you know, um, but, but Ms. Wood is working on the schedules. We're working on the, the specific procedures for lunch. We're going to be releasing a manual um, with all this information. But schedules probably, um, I would say schedules, look for them next week. Okay. Folks, I just, I, you know, again, I want to say, um, I know that, that there's a lot of uh, questions, um, some of them still unanswered. Uh, I think what I can tell you is I'm confident that um, the team that we have at Bryan High School in collaboration with the other leaders in the district, um, both at the other schools and at the district level, are making some really good decisions, um, having some deep conversations about how to do this and do it well so that it works for kids. I'm confident that we're going to get to a good place, but I also know um, that what we do on day one, we may have to tweak for day two because you know we're making plans and once we see the, the reality of things, uh, you know, we, we will upgrade our, our procedures at all time, assess what we're doing, uh, aim to do it better the next day. Um, and, and I think, you know, um, we're going to figure it out because we have, we, that's what we've been doing. I think that's what we've all been doing um, since all of this started. So um, reach out at any time. Uh, we've got a great team here at McMahon. Um, I'll be putting out a link to an FAQ so additional questions can be answered. And um, I appreciate everyone being here. Uh, we have um, almost uh, 250 participants in tonight's meeting. That's a great number. And uh, don't forget about the School Governance Council. I think I have one more question. All right, Q. <laughs> Q <baby. laughs> oh, man, the chat's moving so fast. Um, the chat's moving so fast. I lost it. I really did lost it. I got to work on my 
moderator skills. There was a question there. Desk cleaning. Yes, I think that's it. Uh, so again, we're working on it, but there, there's going to have to be a procedure for cleaning desks in between classes because it's it's a touch surface, right? It's a high touch surface. If one student's sitting at a desk and then the next student comes in, um, we're going to have to figure that that procedure out. Um, you know, we don't. It, it's not going to be the custodians because um, that would require uh, a much longer, larger custodian uh, contingent than we have. Working on it. We know it's a need. Uh, will kids be required to bring laptops to and from classes? Yes. Yes. Have them in school every day because, you know, what may be going on, I'm sitting in a classroom, I might be doing something that I'm collaborating with a kid who's not in the classroom, but we're both presenting to the entire class. And that's a good way to kind of keep that integration between what's going on in the classroom and out of the classroom. Ensure a kind of equitable experience. Okay, folks. Um, again, if we didn't get to your to your uh, to your questions, please uh, you know understand that uh, you know um, it's not that we didn't think they're important, but we'll uh, and and we'll we'll look at the chat afterwards as well. Um, I think there's a way for me to save the chat, um, and uh, um, you know we'll make sure that they get answered either in an FAQ or uh, individually. Yeah, um, just to reiterate, if you uh, travel to a red uh, state that's you know, by the a state that is required by the state of Connecticut to quarantine, when you return to the state of Connecticut, you have to do it. Yes. So I, I mean, required to quarantine. You're required to quarantine. Yep. Period. And and you would be expected not to come back to school until that period of quarantine is over. But still, be Yeah, they would be able to participate uh, remotely, education wise. All right, folks, I'm going to stop the recording now. I will uh, be ending the meeting. And, and thank you all for participating tonight. I hope you walked away um, feeling like you understand um, the, you know, no more than, than you did prior to coming in and that you're confident that we're, we're, uh, we're putting together a great plan here for the kids. All right? Thank you, everybody. All right, take care. Okay, farewell.